FAU blew up the entire rundown. So sad. We were always going to always, we decided earlier on Saturday, we were going to do this on Saturday night and plan to do it, you know, in this general hour. And then FAU scooting across the state, going and playing dunk city. Oh my, 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 um, dunk city wins Florida Gulf coast wins this by four 72 to 68. It's one of the, it's one of the five most surprising outcomes of the season. And FAU already has another one in the top five, Kyle Boone. Consider this. Consider this. Pat Chambers is now the coach at Florida Gulf Coast, former Penn State coach. Um, his team had only won two games against Division One opponents prior to this. He'd beaten FIU, what, five games under 500 at this point, and Georgia Southern with one win to its name. The other victories, the other victories, Dunk City's coming off an OT win against Florida Memorial, my man, NAIA school, okay? Also beat something called the New College of Florida. That's not it. You know what the other win for this team is? You know what? My board's been acting up here. I got it on my phone. You ready? What's what's the other win for, for Florida Gulf Coast? They lost to a Lord's Prayer. They beat a Lord's Prayer. That's it. FAU was 4 of 20 in this game from three-point range. Had plenty of opportunities down the stretch from beyond the arc. Elijah Martin only had eight points, KB. Um, credit to Dunk City, Zach Anderson. He had some chin music with a couple of big-time threes that prevented Dusty May's team from taking the lead. They had tied the game, and then Anderson hit one, and I think it was on the next possession. He hit another one there. The Owls are now six and one in quad one and quad two, but they have got two quad four losses. What are your thoughts on whatever transpired over there on the Gulf Coast on Saturday night? Disgusting. I was actually prepared to make my triumphant return to the podcast with uh, with some owl noises. Maybe a come from behind wind from Florida Atlantic, but no. Florida Gulf Coast, 17 and a half point underdog, gets the win by four points. Um, an ugly, 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 ugly loss for FAU, uh, as Jeff Borzello, of course, from ESPN noted. Second loss uh, for FAU this season to a quad four team, um, which, of course, only team in the top thirty of the net uh, to to qualify for such a such a hideous qualification. Um, and as you noted, Florida Gulf Coast a week ago had to uh, to make a buzzer beating three pointer to escape an NAIA team. So Elijah Martin missed 11 of his of his 14 shot attempts. Uh, FAU went 16 of 27 from the free throw line. They missed 16 of their 23 point attempts. And Florida Gulf Coast, that, that arena was rocking there. Um, it, it felt like they were going to hold on. Um, so it was, it was a weird game. Like Florida Gulf Coast kind of jumped on them early. Uh, Florida Atlantic kind of tried to make a run, but they couldn't get out of their own way. Too many turnovers, too many missed free throws. Uh, just an ugly performance. And we've seen some really high highs from this Florida Atlantic team. Um, you, you could look at their their resume. I mean, this is a team that uh, just a week ago beat Arizona in double overtime. Um, and th they beat you know B Butler and Texas A&M, some other teams. Uh, pretty good resume, but for Florida Atlantic, a team that's probably not going to have a lot of chances to really bolster its resume. Uh, Norlander, not great. Not great. It'll have at least three quad one opportunities in league play because both Memphis games probably will be quad ones, but even if not, they're going to be on the road against teams that are a road game top 75 and that you're a quad one opponent there. So they're going to have at least, at least three. Uh, realistically, by the time we get to the end of the American Athletic Conference tournament, um, it's conceivable that FAU might have uh, as many as six quad ones before we get to the end. But we got to see how that league shakes out there. Um, all neutral sites are top 50 against the net. Uh, think about the game and then a big picture thing on FAU. You know, Dunk City only went to the line eight times, went five of eight from the foul line. Uh, FAU took 27 trips to the stripe. Now only hit 16 of those. 59% from, from the foul line. That's going to get you. They shot well from the interior. Vlad Golden had some opportunities there. Uh, and I thought that they were going to pull it off. Like they, they had composure. They came back. They came back from what was the biggest deficit in this game? It was 39, 26 in the first half. And then 
uh, Gulf Coast had it double digits uh, for a while there in the second half, but they but they roared back. Uh, looked like a great environment there, but man, what a bizarre, bizarre loss. So FAU right now has wins, good wins against Butler and A&M. They have Virginia Tech on a neutral. That's not aging well, not their fault, but just it's not that good. Loyola Chicago hasn't been as good as some thought it would be in the preseason. The Charleston one is, eh, whatever, not going to do much for you. The Bonnies win, we'll see. We'll see what the Bonnies can do in the A-10. And then they've got the Arizona win. See, I think the Arizona, we'll see how this goes for FAU. I'm not going to have one game suddenly like, twist my entire perspective on the team, but come on, man. Lose at home to Bryant by nine, and then you just toss away this game, your final non-con game after the outstanding double OT win over Arizona. Um, uh, the Arizona win might wind up being so valuable that if, like, listen, I see the Owls losing to Bryant and, and FGCU. You can't tell me they're not getting picked off here three or four times in league play. You know, if they're not going, they're going to have to tap into the team they were a season ago to avoid that from happening, KB. And if they don't, the Arizona win might actually carry so much value that it keeps them in the tournament. Like if 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 FAU really messes around and takes on four or five losses in league play, then we're going to have to have an interesting conversation. But we're not there yet. They're going to open up league play at home against East Carolina. Then they've got at Charlotte, at Tulane, a couple of home games. We'll see how it all pans out. But, oh, boy, what a uh, what a downer. And uh, this is just days removed from me proclaiming FAU was, was the team of 2023. <laughs> I gave them a finalized record thinking that they were going to win against Florida Gulf Coast. That's how a road game can trip you up there. Any other thoughts on the on FAU or the game? No, no, I, th I think that uh, that pretty much sums it up. You look at Ken Palm's page, actually, uh, they are projected to win all but one of their remaining regular season games. That loan loss projected February 25th, that is on the road at Memphis. I would imagine this team stumbles up multiple times on the road. The American Athletic Conference this year looks pretty wide open. Um, and honestly, like not very impressive, uh, but still just the way that Florida Atlantic has been just a total roller coaster so far this season. Um, yeah, like I hope we expect that we I hope we could see more of this team playing like it did against Arizona. But um, yeah, the 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 more we see from this team, I, I think more we see that uh, they're going to be kind of inconsistent, and that is uh, that's a bummer. That's a bummer yeah. for uh, for the for the Owls. Yeah, there's some chatter in the chat right now about FAU's long term tournament chances. I think they're going to get in, but I listen if if they make it interesting. Quad four losses are anvils. One is. Two is, an, is another thing altogether. I don't want to say these things offset each other, but maybe if, as far as the committee is concerned, maybe it will once we get to March. The win over Arizona on a neutral, provided that Arizona wins the Pac-12 going away, a Pac-12 that we'll get to later on the show, by the way.